Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much to everyone for coming. And uh, this event has been long awaited. We've been trying to organise draft busting for uh, the Transition Kensal to Kilburn group for at least four months. So, welcome. Uh, what we're going to do straight away is hand over to David, who is going to start, I think, by telling you a little bit more about Transition Town and the approach, and then get straight on to the draft busting exercise. <laughs> so thank you for coming. I'm also completely ignorant about this draft busting, so I'm going to learn in a session as well. Thanks, David. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm David, um, and uh, the reason I've got this gig is because I know how to wield a hammer. That's about it. Um, I'm gonna, the way the morning will work is that I'm going to talk a little bit, very little bit, about transition, about energy saving in the transition context. Then I'm going to talk about housing, specifically heating in housing and conserving energy in housing. And then I'm going to show you how the, um, the specific business of draft busting works. Because draft busting is intended as a cheap and easy way, a quick way, of solving one particular bit of heat loss in a home. Um, transition context to start with. The reason that we at Transition are organising the draft busting um, workshops is because uh, Transition is trying to deal with energy consumption and it, the transition means transition to a low energy economy um, to face the twin challenges of climate change and peak oil. Uh, climate change we burn lots of fossil fuels on the planet, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, the, uh, those emissions raise global temperatures. Um, peak oil is the thesis that we're not running out of oil, but we're not finding oil at the same speed with which demand is rising. The consequence of this is that prices will go up. So the transition approach to a low energy economy is that we should be using less energy because of the climate change argument. And then we're going to have to use less energy because there's going to be oil's going to be more expensive and less readily available. So uh, to tackle these at a community level is about making locally making a community stronger, more resilient, more enjoyable to be with by doing these kinds of things to lower our energy consumption at a community level. Hence. Um, the work that Transition does. I don't know how many of you know the Transition website. You must do. Because no, what is it? Sorry, is it an organisation? It's an organisation. Yes, it's a it's a global organisation. It started in Totnes. Uh, look it up on the website. So it's TransitionContext.com. No, it's called the, It's called Transition Kensal to Kilburn. That's us. But if you want to look it up on the internet, just look up trend, the Transition Network because um, they're organised. At a community level, throughout the country, throughout other countries. It comes from the transition from high carbon to low carbon. Okay. That's where it comes from. But it's from. only about energy. Well, no, the four, well, I'll, I'll briefly say something about that. It is principally about energy, yeah. but because all of aspects of our economy run on fossil fuels at the yes. moment, it's about food production, okay. it's about transport, yeah. it's about heating domestically, and the other key you know, one third of, of fossil fuels get used in industry. We don't have a huge, we can't really affect industry at a community level other than through our consumption choices. But, you know, most people who think about these things do consume in a particular way because they want to be more green. Okay. Yeah. So that's that, when I call it the transition context, I mean I'm putting energy saving at home into the context of the transition movement. Okay. So. Um, Home heating. Most of the houses in this country, we have 25 million homes in this country. Um, mo about 85% of them are still going to be standing in 2050. 2050 is when we've been set national targets for reducing our energy consumption. Five million of those homes are terraced houses. Te most terraced houses that we have in this country were built in the Victorian or the Edwardian era. The kind of heating that existed at that time was coal in the fireplace. These houses are deliberately leaky. They are leaky because if you had a sealed house and a fire in it, people would asphyxiate. The oxygen gets burned up, you'd die. 
So the air is sucked in through the windows on purpose. So now that we no longer have coal fires, we need to address that problem. Um, 20 to 25 percent of your heat in a home will go out through the, the attic. If you're thinking about um, conserving energy, the first thing you should do is insulate your attic. Most people will have their attics already insulated. You should have 20 to 200, 200 to 250 millimetres of insulating in the attic, at least. 250 millimetres? Yeah, six inches. Your floor... So, sorry, do you just it's a floor or the... Um, this, this, well, the it doesn't, it, in fact, it doesn't really matter where yeah. you put it. Yeah. You can put it um, across the floor yeah. and have a void that's uninsulated between the ceiling and the roof. Yeah. But um, nowadays, if you put Kingspan in yeah. between the joists, Kingspan is the, the very thick foam with the aluminium backing. Okay. Yeah. That's cut to fit between the rafters yeah. and then you put plasterboard across the top of it. I mean, if you've got a converted attic, that's what will have been done. Yeah. Um, that'll deal with 20 to 25% of your heat loss in a home. You lose about 15% out through your front door and the back door. And the, m most of that you can't do anything about because it's to do with you open the door to go out, heat goes out with you. Um, but you can do the draft busting to the perimeter of the door. I don't know about you, but at my home, my front door, you stand near it, you can feel the cold underneath and around the sides. 15, 10 to 15% goes out the windows. That's what I was referring to as Victorian Edwardian houses having leaky windows on purpose. Um, that can be dealt with in a number of ways. The best way, um, as far as heat efficiency concerned, is to have your windows double glazed. That's expensive. We are having the downstairs of our house double glazed at the moment because we're redoing our kitchen and the first floor at the back. That's costing us £8,000 to have the windows double closed. It ain't cheap. Elaine. So it's just to say, later, we can go and look yeah, at no, the glazed. Absolutely. Can I tell you um, okay, Tom mentioned it. There's a sort of interim solution. Nick's done it DIY in his own home. A company called Magna Glaze does it as a um, commercial service, which is that you take a window like this, and you, these need to be off, but a, a strip, a magnetic strip goes around this surface, all the way around, and you then have a perspex, because it's not so heavy, um, surface that also has a magnet on it, but just clips on. So it's a sort of quick and easy double glazing solution. I'm not sure about the prices of that, you can look them up on the web, Magna Glaze. Um, you put it up in the winter when you have your windows shut, you take it down in the summer when you want to be able to open your windows. It's about £50 for one uh, panel. This size? Half uh, a window size that, or for the whole that thing? Size. No, the bigger one would probably be more. Maybe. Is that Magna Glaze or is that the DIY price? That's Magna Glaze. Right, okay. Well, there you go. You know, 50, 100, 150 for this window ish. Um, and then the, the cheap option is to simply take the windows that you have and to stop up the, where the drafts are coming through, which is what we're going to be discussing a bit later. Excuse me, and just because I've got a radiator, I've got like a bay mm -hmm. with a radiator underneath, mm -hmm. so my feeling is where a lot of the heat loss goes out is, where I can feel the cold is the glass. Yeah, so conduction, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's double, like, well, when just you put forgetting the, the about price, is the double glazing, particularly it's like it's coming out of my radiator sure. and going outside. There's, I, I mean, this is my personal view, I, I'm not a heating yeah, engineer. The idea of putting a radiator by the mm. window, I've always yeah. thought was stupid. Yeah. Um, because basically you have the impression that you're not cold, mm. but it's chucking heat yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, in our, we have radiators by the window in our house, I just turn those off with the thermostatic valves. I never have them on. Oh, okay. It's mitigated because what happens is that some of the draft, it, you get convection currents which yeah. take the heat into the room better yeah. rather, rather than the heat staying by the radiator. So you get a better, so you kind of get more. From that's the, the principle. Yeah. 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 Undoubtedly, that's the principle. But it's also true that the heat comes up here. Yeah. This is a surface that it can escape from. 
Some of it will. It go, it'll go up like that. But as it goes up, you're going to be losing it out straight through the glass. So in that situation, are you best to have double glazing? Well, that, double glazing is the best it, is the best solution. Yes. Best yes. Solution. Okay. Yeah. And if you're if you're just thinking about doing one panel, for yeah. example, yes, yeah. that's the one I do because it would eradicate that problem of the heat going that way as well as that way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think it would be interesting to get an architect's perspective on that because I know the architects that I know say that there is a, a reason why radiators are put in yeah. front of you know. Yeah. Like that. No, absolutely. I think the they they talk about a curtain of hot air protecting you from the cold. It, it's also common sense that the heat will go out. Mm -hmm. It just is. I'm sure it does both jobs. Mm. Um, the other thing is, though, what, how about where do we get our extra air from if it's completely double glazed? Well, the the extra air you don't. I mean, the, the point about the fireplace is your air is being consumed by the fire. If you don't have a fire, it's not being consumed in the same way, and you'll get air coming in through the doors. You come in and out. You you will never eradicate. The, the drafts completely and if you would rather have a, a steady supply of cool fresh air through your window than retain your energy don't put draft busting on a lot of the Victorian houses have got a vent brick vents yeah. anyway yeah. below the floor yeah. Yeah. that's to stop the down I mean nowadays when they make um, efficiency windows they'll, they'll be a vent at the top oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they're a kind of a slide vent that you yeah. can open it and close it so that you can get the circulation you really notice if you if you don't have a circulation of air in your room, you'll notice because of the condensation. That's the, that's what you're trying. In fact, the vents are really about eradicating the condensation because of the damage no. that it'll do. They're not. It's it's all. It's virtually impossible to make a house so sealed that you're going to be uh, lacking oxygen. That's, it's not going to Swiss happen. Swiss house. Yeah. Um, the floor will also lose about 15% of your heating. Hello. This is Magna Glaze Hope. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Next door. Um, if you're on the earth, most houses will have a small basement or a large basement. A basement acts as an insulator. Um, if, you're, if you don't have a basement, then really you need to insulate under the floorboards. Okay. Again, that's another expensive mm -hmm. proposition. Would you use the same material? As, as you'd use not? the king span. You'd use the similar material to the mm -hmm. material that you'd use in the and attic. That just goes straight down on the bare soil. Well, usually you'll find that the, um, the rafters are on some kind of pillar. And what you'd need to do is put a piece of bit. I mean, this is a builder's job. This, uh, unless you're particularly well versed in DIY, yeah. you have to take up all the floorboards because that's your only access to it. Mm. Um, you'd have to put a piece of bead along each side, lay something plywood, thin plywood between the beading, and pop it on that. Okay, so there'd be a gap between the soil and yeah. Yes. Yes, because otherwise your your timbers will rot. Yes. And so people don't put the the floor joists on the soil. Mm -hmm. At the back of my house, they're very nearly on the soil, and under the main body of my house, they're about that high off the ground on yeah. the brick pier. That's so good. Right. Yeah. The, if you've got some space, if you've got that much space, you can get underneath and stuff it upwards. <laughs> it's not a nice job. Not a nice job. But, you can, but it can be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right. <clears throat> Walls. Walls are the, the hardest thing to deal with. You'll lose 30 to 35% of your heat in a detached house through the wall. Now, the, the most efficient way of insulating that is um, the, the analogy I was heard at a lecture in LSC was you put a tea cosy on a teapot. That's essentially what you're trying to do. You, you insulate the exterior of the wall again with minimum of 200 mil, ideally 250, 300 mil. We can, it wouldn't be allowed in our neighbourhood because of the conservation issues. And you can do it inside.